Greetings, fellow detectives. Wizard Kitten here, bringing you a new build in my series, Building Nancy Drew in The Sims 4. Today, I'm bringing you one of my, I guess, weirdest recreations so far, at least in my mind. This was kind of a weird build for me to do. But this is Nefertari's tomb from the 26th mystery in the Nancy Drew series, Nancy Drew Tomb of the Lost Queen. I would say this is one of the weirdest builds I've done because it's basically entirely underground. And we also don't have any items that are Egyptian in style. We have a lot of items that are Selvadoradian in style. So basically what this build ends up being is rather than it looking like an authentic Egyptian tomb, or at least a recreation of an Egyptian tomb based on what Tomb of the Lost Queen kind of went for in terms of its style and design, this is more a Egyptian tomb meets a... Um, Mayan Incan tomb, I suppose, <laughs> because The Sims 4 Jungle Adventure is a pack that we got that allowed us to explore tombs. It allowed us to go around in the jungle and find treasure and find artifacts and be an archaeologist, which is really cool and honestly one of my favorite gameplay things to do in The Sims. I really enjoy making my Sims an archaeologist and having them get really good at going through the tombs. Plus, there's a puzzle aspect to it as well, which, I mean, we know I'm a Nancy Drew fan, so I'm of course I'm a fan of the puzzles in The Sims 4 as well as far as tombs go but it's more inspired Selva Dorada is more inspired by South and Central American cultures rather than Egyptian um, archaeology and cultures so <laughs> this was the closest that I could get to what the tomb actually looks like by just kind of melding these styles so this is by no means going to be a 100% accurate reproduction of Nefertari's tomb it's more going to be a kind of creative rendering of Nefertari's tomb based on what we have in The Sims 4. Essentially what I did is I just went crazy with items from The Sims 4 Jungle Adventure. I tried to keep the majority of um, like the columns and the interactable items. I tried to include as many of those as possible. I played around a little bit with platforms uh, in order to put big statues up. And I do keep the layout of the tomb relatively similar as well. So later on as we start to add on the different tunnels, I do keep those pretty close to the actual ones in the game. The biggest differences you're going to see is just going to be in terms of style, in terms of the architectural details. So in this room in particular, what I tried to do in order to get the vibe across was put in a ton of columns and then put in a, I don't even know what it's called, but kind of stone throughout the middle of the build and then a ton of glyphs on the outside of the walls on it like the they're really big glyphs in, in the sims 4 jungle adventure they aren't hieroglyphs like we see in the game and that was the hardest thing i think because in the game itself in tomb of the lost queen the walls are just completely plastered with hieroglyphs they're literally everywhere and we don't have any sort of mosaic type wallpapers that would have kind of gotten that idea across we didn't really have any any really wall decorations or wall uh, um, paints and wallpapers that have actual detail on them in that way. So I tried to kind of create my own by using the glyphs and putting them everywhere. And that's really the central idea that I end up going with um, for places that are supposed to have murals as well. I use these big square glyphs in lots of the fun colors to still try and get the idea across that this is a very elaborate tomb. It's a very beautiful tomb. It has a lot of meaning and symbolism behind all of these glyphs and everything. So I had a lot of fun with that. It was a very interesting experience because again, this does not look Egyptian at all, but it's about the closest we can get. So it was an enjoyable experience. I 
have committed to trying to do a build from every Nancy Drew game and Tomb of the Lost Queen is one of the last ones that I needed to do. So we are nearing the end of the list of actual builds or actual games that I need to do a build for. And then when I am done with that, I do kind of want to go back and start building some other locations from the games, like maybe some of the smaller locations that I didn't get to in certain games, other little places that I haven't built before. Places that I still need to do though, I do still need to do Beach Hill Museum uh, from Secret of the Scarlet Hand, which I think unfortunately is gonna look a great deal or have a lot of the same items as this particular build right here because The Sims 4 Jungle Adventure is actually perfect for the kind of artifacts that we would need to do an actual rendering of Beach Hill. So we'll probably be doing a lot of those. Of course, the building itself will look very different and this tomb is meant to be currently being explored whereas Beach Hill it has the artifacts all laid out nicely in exhibits so they will certainly be different builds but they will utilize a lot of the same items because we do not have a whole lot of history in The Sims 4. I do also need to do Blackmore Manor. I would say that right now that's probably the most highly requested build that I still have to get through. I just recently did Wickford Castle and uh, you guys know the big builds are super intimidating they're just scary because they are so big they take so much time there's so much detail to them my computer starts to get exhausted because of all of the things that i have to put in them but i definitely will be doing blackmore manor at some point i do need to do a build for the phantom of venice i know the Conascosta would be kind of the obvious choice for a build for Phantom of Venice, but we see so little of the Ka, and the Ka is not furnished. So I, I kind of feel like I would have a really hard time doing an accurate render of what the Ka should look like and where the rooms and the furniture are. It's just a very sparse build, and we really don't see much of it at all. So I don't really know if the Conascosta is the best choice. I could maybe do the Casa de Giochi, the, I probably said that wrong, sorry if you speak Italian and I just totally butchered that, um, the game, the House of Games, I could do a rendition of that, or I could do one of the marketplaces or plazas. You guys should let me know which builds for Phantom of Venice you would find most um, interesting and also like doable in The Sims, because <laughs> I'm curious what your thoughts are as well. I do also need to do Castle Finster, which is another huge and super intimidating build, but something that I'm very excited for. I'm very much looking forward to doing Castle Finster because it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, and then the Technology of Tomorrow Lab from The Deadly Device, and those are actually the only builds that I still need to do in order to complete the series as far as building at least one build from every Nancy Drew game. I do have a full playlist of all of the builds that I've done so far, so if you were like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that she's already built like Shadow Ranch or the Golden Gardenia or Ramsey Hall from Waverly Academy, I, I'll try to remember to link that playlist up in the corner above. Um, but this series has really helped me grow as a builder, which has been kind of fun. It's <laughs> interesting to look back at my old builds and see the way that I did them and how I was so much more stressed about getting them as exact replicas as possible. And I think especially with this build, I was kind of just like, well, that's, that's close enough. <laughs> I'm starting to learn to be able to just say that more often. I feel like as a, as a perfectionist, it's really hard for me sometimes to just be like, oh, you know, that that's good enough. That's that's a pretty good rendering of what we got. That's pretty close. I'm not going to stress about it too much because not everything is possible. <laughs> and I feel like I did the best that I could. So I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better at learning how to do that and actually being okay with it. That's what these builds are good for. These builds are good at helping me work through my mental health struggles in terms of my perfectionism because The Sims 4 has its limits and so do I in terms of creativity and what I could actually accomplish as well. 
We've finished the main chamber now and done all of the floor plan for the rest of the tunnel rooms. I will pause kind of after doing each space because I uh, I watch my own walkthroughs when I'm trying to do these recreations so I can speed through and get all of the different angles of the room. So you'll see me pause every once in a while as I pull up that video to kind of see what room I should do next, what it's supposed to look like, the colors that it's supposed to have. And that's really what I did for these tunnel rooms is really go off of the colors and then fill them in with columns, fill them in with the stone walls, and then fill them in with the glyphs. And every once in a while, a couple of actually interactive dig piles as well. So there will be artifacts here and there kind of laid about the castle that your Sims can actually interact with and can actually dig for artifacts in which I think is kind of fun. I do like the idea of actually getting to go into the tomb and actually find artifacts just like Nancy would. I think that's, that's quite fun. I quite enjoyed that idea. I did also want to mention that the day that this uh, video goes live on YouTube is a uh, Wizard Kitten Wednesday. That's kind of been our thing uh, during this school year. But this Wednesday, in addition to this video, I will actually be streaming. So uh, at four o'clock tonight, four o'clock on Wednesday, March 10th, I will be streaming Miss Clue Peril in Pemberley. So if you would like to join the live stream today, please feel free. I would love to see you there. It's kind of an 800 subs celebration because the channel very recently hit 800 subscribers and I'm just so excited. So I really want to celebrate with all of you fellow detectives and really enjoy that. And Peril in Pemberley is the only um, one that we haven't done yet so we have that to look forward to and it'll be pretty cool very excited so hopefully i will see you there it still kind of blows my mind that we're at 800 subscribers now it's just so cool so welcome if you are new to the channel i'm so happy to have you here if you don't know the channel does have an instagram so you could go follow wizard kitten yt on instagram for updates and then participation in um, Nan some of my Nancy Drew analysis videos, if you're curious about that. We do have a channel Discord as well, and both of those are going to be linked in the description of this video. So if you want to be part of the community, that is how. So now we are moving on to this little tunnel back here. This is one of the more simple tunnels and it had a bunch of vases on pedestals. So I decided to actually put in some of the vases that you can authenticate from the archeology span skill. So I put in a couple of those. They all look the same right now, but there's four actual different vases. So if your Sim has the archeology span skill, they can go in here, find these vases and then authenticate them. And then they their true form will show shine forth and they, they end up looking really cool. Again, I really love the archaeology career. It's not even a set career, but it feels like a career to me just because you can have your sim go on these excursions and then eventually get their archaeology skill up high enough that they are then able to have things sent to them by the like the historical society or the archaeological society. So your sim can work from home too as an archaeologist and just have things sent to them make so much money it's seriously a very lucrative career especially because if you go into the temples you can sell the artifacts that you find and you're always going to find at least one artifact that's like 8,000 to 10,000 simoleons so hey if you need a lucrative career for your sims I would highly consider being an archaeologist plus it's super fun and interactive I just really enjoy it it reminds me a lot of the sims 3 world adventures which was almost certainly one of my favorite expansion packs for The Sims 3 way back when, when I played that one. Um, beyond like the necessities like university and seasons and pets, I think the World Adventures pack was just so fun because you could go, there was like a France inspired world, there was an Egyptian inspired world just like um, I'm trying to recreate here. There was, what was the other world? There was another world. Oh, I believe it was um, inspired by China. There was a another world as well and it was just so fun because you could go to these places and explore the tombs get to know the cultures and that's the idea that they really brought forth with the sims 4 jungle adventure and they've only done it this one time i would totally be interested in them doing it more because i just think it's so fun and interactive it's just very cool 
This room that I just placed here is actually the tomb, uh, the tomb for Nefertari that Nancy first finds in the game. And I decided to just put in treasure chests for the game, so for this build. So there isn't a like coffin or anything there, they're just big treasure chests. And then there's a chest that's also supposed to symbolize where the canopic jars would be. And then this hallway is, I mean, probably my favorite part of the tomb because I'm a huge cat lover. We have the, the cat tomb and the hallway of cats. So I sized up these giant cat statues and I just love how they're standing along the side and your sim would walk in there and then there's just these giant cats. I think that's wonderful. And then you walk into this big main chamber and there is a... I use one of the fancier treasure chests, so this is one of like the fancier rooms, and it, I put it up on a pedestal with a platform tool. I actually found a really cool gold balance. I, I don't even know what they're called. The things that you use in order to determine the weight of something by balancing each end, because Nancy has to use one of those in the game, and I just thought it was so cool that I was able to plop that in there. I loved that it was gold, so it fit in really nicely. I just thoroughly enjoyed that. I've also been using these standing lights throughout the entire tomb. They have them in the main kind of uh, the main room of the tomb in the actual game. They have those kinds of lights. So I just kind of decided to put them throughout the tomb because I didn't want it to be dark everywhere. And if they use them in one space, they're bound to use them in others at some point just because it's easy to, I, I would imagine, like have an extension cord running between them and have multiple of those lights set up. They'd be easy to move, easy to direct the light. That seemed, um, it seemed like it made sense. It was a good way to get some light into the build so that it wasn't so totally dark. I really enjoy looking at the build too from kind of a bird's eye view because I can just like see the floor plan of the game and imagine myself walking through this build and playing um, Tomb of the Lost Queen. I just, <laughs> I really like how the floor plan turned out. I didn't include the final corridor to the big kind of ending room um, from the end game sequence. I didn't include that because it isn't on the main map for the majority of the game. It's only there for like the very end of the game and the heights didn't quite work because this is just a full basement level. Adding in kind of an upper level didn't quite make sense because then the tomb itself would no longer be underground. So I just kind of decided to leave that part out. I do still have the real tomb and that's what we're working on now. I use the same kind of design as the cat tomb and uh, yeah, I like how it turned out. I <laughs> belatedly realized that I there are actually coffins in the game because of The Sims 4 Vampires. So I was able to put one of those in. I initially just had two of the fancier treasure chests and then I was like, wait, I actually can put in like a mummy looking kind of thing. <laughs> so here we are adding that in. It looks way too ornate for an Egyptian tomb. Um, not, that, not that Egyptian tunes aren't ornate, because they certainly are, but not in this particular style. But I think it's kind of funny, so you, your sim could actually go down there, sleep in that coffin, and sleep in Nefertari's tomb. I also did a little makeshift campsite up here to kind of get across the idea that this is where the dig site is, this is where the group is hanging out. We don't have a t build a tent function or anything in the actual game itself, so I figured this little campsite area would be fine, would be sufficient. But anyway, we are coming up on the screenshots very soon. I do hope that you enjoyed this build. I hope that it was interesting. I hope that it was kind of a creative rendition and that it looks like Nefertari's tomb to you. It was certainly fun to build, so I hope it was fun to watch as well. As always, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching, fellow detectives. I will see you soon.